Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call us right now for more help at 866-945-8070. Wouldn't that be funny? Well, it's still recording to Facebook, though. So we always at least have that as kind of a safeguard. Uh, So go to bqe.com and go to products, and we'll go to core. So core is their new product. And as I understand it, the, the intention is for this product to sort of overtake all the existing products. Everything is going to eventually... Uh, you know, be moved into core if you've ever used, you know, if you're using Bill Quick, if you're using ArchiOffice or Engineer Office, the uh, ultimate goal is going to be for everybody to eventually migrate to core. It kind of has the best of all the products in one, and it's in the cloud, and their mobile app is amazing, um, which reminds me I should actually get that set up so I can show you the mobile app. Another app to use called Screencast, which lets you share your mobile device on your screen with ease. Colon slash slash one nine two. Looks like that's the one. See that? And I probably put them there. Great. So we'll come back and look at the mobile app while we do this. Let's go to sign in. Now, you're, we're going to want to play with the sample companies, but before you can play with the sample companies, you do need a login. So it's just how they've set it up. You got to be logged in even to use the sample company. So if you haven't, you'll have to take an account with them. And then I'm going to go into the sample accounting company. Now, everybody's all about dashboards, right? We love our dashboards. And uh, and BQE has taken note. Hang on, the uh, mobile app is making me log in again. And, of course, we get this warning that says, hey, you're using a sample company. Make sure this is what you intended to do. Wouldn't that be funny if somebody wasn't paying attention, went into the sample company, entered all kinds of data, only to realize they're in a sample company? That would be so funny. That wouldn't be funny. That would be very sad. It would be so funny. (laughs) I haven't had my coffee yet. I'm having it now. Making fun of other people. I never make fun of other people. No, not you. I make fun with other people or something like that. I like it. Yeah. Um, All right. Signing in on the mobile. It said, oh, wonderful. It says my subscription expired. All right. I guess we're not going to be looking at the mobile app today. I have to talk to them about that. Um, So we have dashboards. We have KPIs, right? Notice what it shows me and let me minimize the uh, menu. You can already see the the interface in general is very familiar. It's it's much more like you know you know what most sort of modern you know cloud-based apps look like, right? It's just real clean and clear and easy. And so the first thing we're looking at here is our age receivables, our expenses. It shows you staff effective rates. Remember that this is designed for you know architects and engineers and other professional services who like it or not are still very much concerned with tracking time and looking at utilization rates and wanting to know how much burden there is on the job and all the things that our value pricing cohorts are telling us to get away from. So, um, you know, it has, it has a context here. There are still businesses that really want to do this and use this and manage things according to it. Notice we have to do's down here, right? Now, if I go up here to actions and I say manage, right? Or customize. Let's go to manage, right? So now I can rename my dashboard. And that's fun. But really what I want to do is go to customize. You'll notice the screen goes a little gray and I can reorganize these things. This guy right here is to move the widget. Let's say I want my to-dos at the top. 
right? And sometimes you gotta be a little forceful. And once it's there, but no, I really wanted it there, good. Okay, and then I can say save layout down here. But, but, let's say I just hate this whole layout. I don't want any of it. What I can do here is add a whole new dashboard. So I can say, okay, let's call this Seth's Cashboard, right? And I can check off here shared, which means other users would be able to access this dashboard. So that's very handy if I'm working with a team, I can create a layout. And remember, we're talking dashboards here, so we wanna be able to make sure that, you know, what do I like to say about dashboards? I, I liken it to my, um, my dashboard on my car, right? It needs to give me really important information that in a glance I can understand and make use of it without having to spend a lot of time digging too deep into it, right? And all that was to say, when I'm driving in my car, I need to be able to stay focused on the road, but at a glance, I need to be able to see how much fuel is in the tank and how fast am I going, right? So we, with the dashboard, we wanna create the business equivalent of that, right? Something that lets us know at a glance what's going on with our business. So, you know, I like having the to-dos uh, front and center, so that's gonna be a list and it's here. I can choose this and click continue, and then there's different kinds of layouts. So let's say I want my to-dos nice and big and wide across the top. Boom, and now let's add a quick to-do. And let's say Scott Jackson, that's who I'm actually logged in as. If I go, not to the timers, where am I? There, see, I'm logged in as Scott Jackson in the sample company. So do the unboxing webinar, right? It's supposed to happen today. We can select internal overhead since it's not really job specific. Notice when I'm entering the memo, I get some formatting tools and save. So I can keep track of all of my to-dos right here. Let's go back to my dashboard. Or here's all the to-dos, let's go home. And let's go to Seth's cashboard. So now it starts to show my to-dos, right? What else would I wanna see? Let's add widgets. And you'll notice the widgets that you can add are broken down into different categories. I've got my list, my bar charts, dual bar chart, triple line graph, donut graph, and interactive list. So let's do the donut graph. Let's say I do want to see the age receivables. You know, usually my first concern with myself and my clients is I want to see how we're doing cash flow wise, right? That's the lifeblood of the business. I need to make sure that our money, our receivables are being collected, right? And while we're at it, I think we have, not there. There's another receivables report in here, I think that we can add the aging. Go away, Lewis. All right, so I can start to get a sense of what's going on receivables wise you know, by adding these kind of widgets. And I can keep going down the line and adding more widgets. I don't wanna spend an entire hour adding widgets, but I think you get the idea, you know. And of course, what I encourage you to do is go, get in here and get a, you know, get a sample company going, create a login, and start playing around with the sample company file so you can get used to, you know, what this looks like. Um, I can go into here and I can filter the widget and, you know, and filter it based on date range, right? And there's some other options there. So play with this stuff. This plus sign would be, of course, to add another to-do. And again, let's go back home. The aging, by default, it's set for last 12 months, but maybe I just want, well, I would love to have an option for last three months, for last quarter. But let's just say we did last 12 quarters. That 
also could be useful, right? Although sample data doesn't go back quite far enough to fill all that in. So that's your dashboards. That's, I think, the magic of this really at the end is that you get to, you know, create that quick glance view. So you know in an instant, here's what's going on with my business or with my client's business first thing when I log in every day. But let's get into the rest of this. So since most of you have said that you don't really um, have a lot of experience using, uh, you know, using uh, BQE's other products, then I want to kind of give you the higher level that I may not have necessarily bothered to give. And I'm just checking our attendee list to see if anybody else is joining. Okay. So... BQE Core is really, it's an accounting slash project management slash time and billing software, right? They've really brought in the core accounting function and done a great job of that here. So if I go into my contacts, I've got it broken down, employees, vendors, and clients, right? Pretty standard stuff. If you go in here, you can add employees, vendors, and clients. I'm not going to walk you through that. You can figure that part out pretty easily, I'm sure, right? If we go to lists, we have activity items and expense items, right? So activity items would be to give you a, a, a comparable equivalent that you'd be familiar with. Think of your service items in QuickBooks or QuickBooks Online, right? And expense items are, there's really nothing quite comparable to that in QuickBooks or QuickBooks Online. So I guess you could say they're like service items, but they're specifically to drive certain expenses. And think of the kinds of expenses that an employee working on a job would need to get reimbursed for right, their mileage, their meals, their, all the stuff that would normally go with uh, the types of businesses, you know, professional services where employees might be working on jobs and even traveling to clients and getting reimbursed for things, So, the, as well as other expenses that you might want to bill back to a client, right? So, so those are your expense items. Then you can create custom fields, and then there's other. Uh, oh, let me save my changes there. Oh, I guess I don't need to save it. That's weird. Okay, let's go to list other. I guess I'm leaving. I'm losing something. I don't know what. It didn't look like there was anything to save. Um, so other lists, we have classes, right? Just like classes in QuickBooks. We have note categories, so you can take notes at pretty much any stage, right? You can take client level notes, project or job level notes, and you can create categories specifically for those notes, right? You can, yeah, here's your terms list, right? Just like you have in QuickBooks where you can establish what the terms would be. Uh, cost pools is a little different. That's where you can, well, just like it says, you can create sort of cost centers where you might group a bunch of expenses into one cost category, separate and apart from what you would do, let's say, on the chart of accounts, right? It gives you another way to group costs um, because sometimes there's going to be a logic to that that you're going to want to be able to take advantage of. Um, and then we have a communication list, which this I have not looked at before. Um, so it looks like we can add contact information. Okay, and I'm not sure, honestly, how that's different from going to, let's say, a client and creating a new client here and adding their contact information here. It may be contacts that don't fall into one of the categories of employees, vendors, or clients, right? But so now we're into adding a new contact. Again, very straightforward. You're going to fill out a form. You're going to put in their name and all the information that goes with it. I love this because I used to create a custom field in QuickBooks for this, excuse me, uh, which I would call the review date, but it was essentially the date they became a client because I wanted to be able to run reports that showed me, you know, who was up maybe for an increase in their fee if I wanted to increase their fees once a year. So I love that they have this built right in at the client level. And here we have engagements, which is what we're calling it because it's an accounting company that we're using in the sample company. But you can change this, just like in Bill Quick, you can change the nomenclature that gets used. So you don't have to call it an engagement, you can call it a project. You, you know, if it's a legal company, you can call it a case or a matter. So Sarah's commenting in Facebook, cost pools as a nonprofit funding sources. Sarah, you're always just thinking of yourself. I'm kidding, of course. Um, so yes, obviously these can be used uh, in any number of ways, um, and it may be very useful 
in that capacity. Um, so let's go back to, in fact, let me show you how to change the nomenclature because this it's actually kind of cool. Um, we want to go into settings. We want to go into global settings, right? This is another thing. I find the navigation in this product so much better than the old products, right? The, it's just really drop dead simple to find what you're looking for. If you want to go into settings, you go into your company drop down here, you go to settings and we go to global settings for this. And down at the bottom we have custom labels, right? And scrolling down, here's the project. So at the top level, they're giving you the generic names and here's what I can call it. So we're, here's why we're calling a project an engagement or here, here's where that option gets set. Where's the clients? <laughs> Sarah's laughing. If you want to call clients pitas, there it is. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. Isn't this fun? Yes. <laughs> All right, now. Under engagements, notice what we have. We have assignments. Let's go through here. So this is where, of course, you would assign team members, right? You could also assign activity items and expense items. So here you pick which engagement we're setting things up for. And if you, if you don't assign anything, at least I'm assuming this works the way it did in BillQuick, then everything will be available to be used when one is working on that project. But as soon as you start specifically selecting, let's say for this project you only wanted certain ex activity items to be available to be chosen and used by those who are working on that project, as soon as you select just one, it will only show the ones that you've selected to be included which is really cool if you think about it because what it enables you to do is limit the amount of friction one encounters when they're trying to record time and expenses on a project. They don't have a long list of stuff to go through. They're only gonna be shown the things that are relevant to that project. So really, really cool. The only downside to that is if it should come to light that there's a new item that should be included and isn't, you know, that's gonna slow things down because now they have to let you know, hey, this is not available on somebody, an admin perhaps is gonna have to go in here and go check off the item that should be included. And of course you have the option to add an activity item right from here. Now, the other question is, now that I've checked these off, there's no save button, right? So when there's no save button, the assumption is that it's just being saved automatically as you check things off. Let's test that theory. Let's get out of this project. And let's go back in. And no, so I was wrong. So if we check these off, oh, this is just to, uh, never mind. this is just actions. So we can delete them if we wanted to. So I guess that's how you would limit it. So sorry, like I said, this is an unboxing, so I'm just figuring a lot of this stuff out myself. So it looks like actually the fact that it's here means it's available to be used in this engagement. If I didn't want something to be used, then what I would do is delete it. And that actually makes a lot more sense. Right, so if it's here, it's available. If it's deleted, it's not. Because I don't assume that deleting this deletes it permanently from the activity items list, which would be here. Let's, let's test that theory, right? This is how I learned how to do this stuff. I'm like, all right, well, if that didn't work the way I thought, let's try it this way and see if this makes sense, right? So we're gonna delete, um, let's just delete uh, audit prep annual, right? Let's delete that item. I'll say yes. So it's gone from there, but let's make sure it's still there in the activity items. Let's make sure I didn't delete it from the whole company. Nope, there it is, audit prep annual. So now if we go back to engagements, and we go here, oops, wait. Wait, now I lost my place. <laughs> um, oh, assignments, that's where we were. And activity items, and again, audit prep annual is not there. If I wanted to add it back, 
That's easy enough to do. But I don't actually see it. There it is, it's back. Okay, so we're figuring out how this stuff works. Um, allocation and forecasting was one of my favorite features of Bill Quick. It's still here. Um, this is where you can really take a look at your workload and who's doing how much and when and who might be overburdened so that you can reassign things. It's a really cool area of Bill Quick. was a really cool area of Bill Quick. They've still got it here. And I haven't played with this yet. So I don't know which projects are going to have data for us to look at here. Um, and I don't have time to go into a feature like this. Uh, let's go to forecasting. Let's see if that reveals any information. So the forecasting kind of shows you, you know, as you can see, if there were data for this, um, which employees were working, actual hours, scheduled hours. You can do it month over month. You can change that to week over week. I wish I could figure out a... Uh, an option here that I knew for sure had data to look at. And I thought some of my BQE friends might be here this morning. I noticed a couple of them registered, but it looks like not. So no help for us here today. Um, all right, so never mind that. Let's go back up to, the rest is pretty straightforward, right? Budgets, you can create budgets, that's normal, that's not gonna be anything new, it's just important to note that it's here and I can create a budget and then I can assign a budget to a project and say this is the budget, meaning we can't go over these amounts on these activity codes or these expense codes and so on and so forth. We can create estimates, we can set up different fee schedules, right? So that if somebody's standard rate is this much, but I want to create a fee schedule because I want that to override the standard rates and I want these to be the fees for what these different people do on this project. That's in a nutshell what fee schedules are all about. Request for information, another thing I love. I've, you know, since the days I worked as an auditor, we had a standard form that we would fill out and give to the client that we need, you know, to request information. I love that they have this built in to the product so I can request information within the project that I need. I can request bank statements from my clients, right? Uh, submittals, this would be really for architects if I want to submit plans, and notice we have drawings, right? Again, there's a lot of architect-specific stuff in here and engineer-specific stuff in here. Um, now I want to show you something really cool. So you saw the dashboards on the home page, right? But check this out. So if I'm going into my list of engagements, and let's just pick on this first one again. I'll click on the engagement. And then under general here, let's go to performance. In a glance, I get another kind of dashboard that shows me how this project is performing, which is so cool, right? The earned value, the percent paid, right? So if the earned value is 100% and they're only 82% paid, at a glance I know I need to be talking to this client and getting paid, right? Profitability and utilization. Scrolling down, we have contract analysis, right? We have budget analysis, so did we go over under the budget? I love this. Over here we have the earned value graph, right? What's billed, what's billable, what's the cost? Billability analysis, right? We have 6,300 unbilled, that should be billed it looks like, right? We have 114 that's billable, only 107 that's billed. So I love how this gives in a glance, the visual. It lets me see very quickly, very easily, what's going on on a project. And by the way, let's go to lists, sorry, contacts, employees, and let's pick on Scott Jackson, since that's who we're pretending to be today, and let's go to his performance. So now we can quickly look at an employee's performance. Utilization, 91%. That means 91% of his time is billable time, time being spent directly on a project that's earning us money, right? That's generally considered pretty good, but I love how quickly I can get that information about an employee. So in addition to the main dashboard I showed you on the home screen, you have, oh, I'm getting a lot of likes on Facebook on this one. <laughs> um, in addition to the dashboard I have on the home screen, I, what I'm able to do here is get in and look at very specific areas 
like we just saw, I can look at a project and see how the project is performing. Here I can see how an employee is performing. What about a client? Where I might have several projects for an entire client. Let's take a look. Remember, we renamed them PETAs. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Let's pick a client. Let's go. Let's pick on uh, Dynamic Autos. Larry Smith. And again, we'll go to General. If you don't see it up here, then it's in this drop down menu. It seems to configure it based on how much screen real estate you actually have. But now I can look at my performance for the entire client. Notice this, they're 90% paid, but 100% completed. Again, another indication, this is a client I need to get in touch with. Right, 51% profit. I don't know if that's good or not, depends on the industry, I suppose, and the nature of the client and all that good stuff. Right, and again, earn value, billability. Here we get to look at retainers from the client, right? Margins, there's lots of really cool stuff here that you can, and the, the trick is you're getting stuff here that in other softwares that are out there that sort of claim to do this kind of stuff, it would take you a lot more time. You'd have to run reports and probably dump them into spreadsheets and run calculations to get this kind of information in most other products that are out there. Where here they've really kind of just thought it through and given you the ability to, you know, in a click, get really important high level information so that you as the accountant or bookkeeper or, or you as the client, you know, working on your own stuff, either way, you know, accountant and, accountant and client, accountant and business owner can work together to understand how things are performing, how things are going, right? Again, most important thing, cash flow. I gotta make sure that I'm collecting what I should be collecting, right? If I'm 100% complete and only 90% paid, Maybe there's a punch list I need to go through with the client, make sure they've got what they need, make sure I can get that other 10%. This is what I call low hanging fruit, where I can easily go look at something, get in touch with the client and say, hey guys, you know, we've done our job as far as we know, we need to get paid now, right? Cash flow is king. And these tools give us the ability to see, so we don't have to spend time going through an entire client list, we can quickly see you know, which clients really need our attention so that we can maximize cash flow and minimize the effort needed to, you know, uh, to get that cash flow rolling. So, uh, time and expenses. A lot of this is gonna be pretty familiar stuff, right? I have a time card. And really cool feature of this, if I just wanna quickly jump in here and enter my time, right, I can do it really quickly. I can say, all right, we're gonna do 500, we're gonna do audit, right? And I'm gonna jump in and say that uh, Monday, July 31st, I put in five hours on here, and then yesterday I put in another two, right, and save. So really, really easy if I need to, to jump in quickly and log my time. Right, of course there are timers. So I can go here and I can add timers. And if I'm not mistaken, you know, what, what Core will do that some of the other time tracking products out there don't necessarily do is I believe it will aggregate your time for the whole day. So if I put in, you know, an hour on one job and then switch over to a different job, put in time on that and come back to this job, I'm not gonna get two separate entries for this job. I'm gonna get it aggregated so I don't have a million entries for a single day if I'm in the, a business where the nature of it is such that I'm jumping around a lot from one project to the other. Um, so I think that's really handy and really important even um, you know, to know that it's, it's going to make it much more manageable when I have multiple timers. Um, again, apparently I have to talk to my friends at BQ about my um, my mobile app, the, you know, it told me at the beginning that my subscription was expired, so I couldn't log in. I'll try one more time because the mobile app on this thing is also just awesome. And I wish I could get in. Let's try it again. See, nope, it says subscription expired. So, all right, sorry guys, I'll have to find out about that. But we're also going to bring somebody from BQE here. Um, I think actually Shafat Kazi himself is going to come on and give us a demo. You know, I always like to do the unboxing myself first and then have somebody from the company come in who really knows the product, you know, kind of show us around and, and give it to us from that perspective. So I believe that's happening next Friday or the Friday after I have to double check that. So 
we have timers. And I, as you can see here, I can just run a timer. And notice what's cool is I can start running the timer before I've even put in the information. You know, because sometimes you're just in a rush and you just want to start the timer and get to work, and then you'll come back and fill it in later. So I also like that it lets you do that. Okay, and then I can save the timer. And notice it's still running here. And guess what? I can add another timer. And run this one and save it. So now I have two timers running simultaneously. Now I'm honestly not 100% sure why you would do that, but it might be that you simply, you know, want to kind of track what amount of time it took you to work on a specific thing within the project. I don't know, but I like that I have the flexibility to do that if I ever want it, right? And over here I can get back into the details on either of these timers to fill in the engagement, the activity, and so forth. So let's quickly do that. We're picking on this Dawson, the activity, audit prep. And you see how you can just quickly type a few letters? You know, that's pretty standard on most products. Um, save timer. Okay, billing, we have all the regular stuff, right? Invoices, I can produce statements, payments. They have a specific area built out, just as they did in Bill Quick and uh, ArcGIS um, for retainers, right? So it has a built-in feature area specifically for handling retainers. It makes it nice. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess, because they had done this by now in Bill Quick Online and Bill Quick, that we can have both client and project level retainers. So I can take a retainer at the client level if I don't know which project it's going to be used for and then later on allocate it to a particular project when the time comes to build them. So really, really powerful retainer structure built in. It's the kind of thing that's almost glaringly missing from a lot of other accounting products out there. And it's such a, it's such a common thing, it really should be there. Of course, credit memos, invoice collections, and then we can do recurring invoices. And speaking of recurring invoices, you know, when you set up an engagement and you set up their billing structure, you can set up automatic billing which means that Core will harvest the data, all the time and expenses that need to get billed back to a project and automatically prepare the invoices for you and present it to whomever the billing manager is so that they can approve it and send it out. So there's a lot of stuff that's gonna be automated in here that's really, really nice that makes your life really easy. Accounting, we have an accounting module and notice here. Now as I dig into this, I'm gonna give you fair warning that you will not necessarily need any other product if you're using Core. In other words, people are gonna ask, does it integrate with QuickBooks Online? Yes, it does. It also happens to integrate with MYOB. And a little birdie on the BQE tree, I think whispered in my ear that they're working on other integrations for other popular accounting products. But they have their own bank feeds area here. And as far as I'm concerned, with this alone, you may not need any other accounting product because you have all the accounting stuff you need right here. You've got the chart of accounts. You can set everything up that you would need to do. And check this out. I thought this was kind of cool. The, the feed, not only does it let you hook up your bank account, but it even has utilities in here like Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. Now, I'm not 100% sure how this works, but I'm guessing I can actually download my bills directly from the Department of Water and Power and get them entered and coded to my utilities expense, right? That's kind of cool. That's more than kind of cool. That's actually really cool. So their bank feeds area is very powerful. As you can see, any major company, any major bank or credit card, for sure, and I'm sure a lot of not so major ones can be found in here. Um, Let's see if they have, for example, this is kind of an oddball one that we have here in California, First Republic. Yep, they even have like the little local banks here. This is a bank that's used a lot local to me here where I am in Los Angeles, um, and it's here. The, uh, the bank feed platform, I, as I understand it, I believe is built on Yodel. So, you know, with Yodel, you have access to pretty much anything that you could, that, that anybody could have access to, I guess. Let's put it that way. So you have the full accounting features built out here. Let's close this, right? Of course, you can get in here and set up your chart of accounts, registers, 
is where you can go in and look account by account, kind of like you have in QBO, where I can say, all right, let me focus on this one account register, my Wells Fargo savings, and boom. And I can add my transactions in just from here. It even looks a bit like the registers look in QuickBooks Online. So it should be fairly familiar. And from here I can add, or perhaps that's what I click on after I filled that up here is to add. From here I can reconcile, so it has my account reconciliation, export as a CSV, and I can get into my reports. Um, and then from here is where I'm gonna add any transactions, right? So I'm gonna add checks, or I can add a deposit. And notice here it has, just like undeposited funds in QBO, we call it existing client payments, but same idea. I can say here are the two items I'm depositing into my account today. Please select the account for which you want undeposited funds. So the bank account will go into Wells Checking. Ah, there we go. Cool. Who wants $117,492 deposited into their account today? I do. <laughs> Suchi, I'll split it with you. How's that sound? Oh, yeah. I'm in. You know what? Because I'm fair. In two kinds, so. though. I try. You know, I try to take care of my peoples. Oh, yeah. Oops, I got an echo chamber going here. Um, okay, let's keep moving forward. So we have all the accounting stuff that's fit to print or use or something. And I love this, look, recurring checks. Isn't that fun? I'm gonna create a recurring check for a million dollars to go to Suchi every week. Yay, I win. I quit, goodbye everyone. <laughs> wait, you gotta wait till the check clears. Okay. I trust you, Zeb. <laughs> That's a bad idea. <laughs> Over here we have productivity tools, which gets, gets us back to the to-dos, of course, the notes. I don't know about you, but I'm like a junkie for things like notes, just anything that helps me keep more organized about stuff. I know Sarah is too. She loves to make notes, right? We love our notes. So I can, and, and remember we saw how we can create note categories, right? So here's where we can filter by note categories. So I can do general, I can create new, I will say leave because I don't care about any changes I haven't saved. The type is P. I just love that. Um, <laughs> just don't let your clients see that if you if you decide to go that route. Make sure they never see your real quick file. You need a WTF one. What? You need the WTF one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, and so here we'll select the note category that we're writing the note for. I love this because it's really about communication at the end of the day, right? So when, we're, when I'm working on a project, especially with a team, the notes are like critically important to me that, you know, in my team it's important. Now we do a lot of this kind of stuff in Slack right now, but it's really cool to have it built into your accounting product where I can make notes and write a note that's addressed to Suchi and say, hey, Suchi, I worked on this project today and here's where I'm at and here's what I think needs to be done and here's what I need your help with and tell me if this works or tell me if there's anything wrong. You know, I just love the facilities that allow me, you know, good, solid communication with my team so that I can make sure that everything is going according to plan, right? Because you know what I say about making plans, right, Sarah? Make the plan. Execute the plan. What's next? Start all over. Come on. You were just there this week in Seattle. I know. Make I the plan. Execute. Everybody was sleeping by my session. I because no, I have to go to off, be expect here. it to go off the rails. Know. Expect the plan to go. Dennis gets the Starbucks card if I still <laughs> okay. had it. I've had no coffee, so. <laughs> well, well, get to it. Get on the ball. Make the plan. Execute the plan. Expect the plan to go off the rails. That's what I mean. Just in review. All over. Adjust and review. So I love these kinds of features that allow me to have the right kind of communication with the client. Would I eliminate Slack? Slack? Sorry? I just wanted to ask, so what happens when you add this note? Is it going to get emailed to whoever you indicate, or is it just going to be there and someone has to check it? What type of... That is an excellent question, which you should hold for when Shafat is here, because I'm not okay. sure, to be honest with you. I, I suspect that if I assign the note... 
to somebody other than myself that they will be notified, I believe. But I'm not 100% sure. Cool. Got it. I think so. Or it might be that when they come into their dashboard, can we add the notes to the dashboard? Let's go back. Let's go back to Seth's cashboard. Right? And let's add a notes widget. Interactive list. That's documents. List. Here's notes. <laughs> See what this says now. I love how it updates the nomenclature through and through. See a list of journal notes related to employees, projects, and PETAs for a defined period of time. <laughs> All right. And let's do the notes nice and wide. So, you know, and that could be kind of how you do it is, where did my notes go? Oh, it went to the bottom here. Right, so it might be that this, and if I go to the filters, I could say maybe only show notes that are addressed to me. Add filters, select filter, employee. Right, so it looks like I could at the very least, what I can tell you for sure is set it up on my dashboard so that any notes that are assigned to me will show up in my notes widget on my dashboard, right? But I have a feeling there's a notification that'll go out as well. I know that in the setup, there was a place to set up your email, right? So that email notifications for sure could go through to your email servers. Uh, let's go to global settings here. Email settings. See, I love how easy it is to figure out how to do things in this product. And all too often, that's my biggest frustration with software is that it's not intuitive. It's not easy to just figure out where to go. Like this is not the sort of thing I should have to go read the fact section of a website to figure out how to do, right? But here I would send the username, the sender's email ID, right? So it looks like I will be able to configure core to send emails through my mail server on my behalf. Which means that in theory, when I get a note assigned to me, it should be able to send me that note from the person who assigned it to me or however that works. So, Suchi, put that on your list for uh, next Friday or the Friday after. Well I think it's do. the Friday after. Yeah. All right, love that. Documents, documents, oh my God, this is really cool. This is a really cool feature. Now, of course, it's not going to let me, I don't think, actually add documents in a sample file. But let's try it. Let's see if I have anything on my desktop or in my downloads that I can quickly drag over here just for fun. And so you can attach documents here in general to the... Uh, documents area, but I can also go into, here's a, here's a thought, let's go to the engagements again. And let's pick on my Dawson, Texas company. And let's go to documents within the engagement, see? And you know, one thing for sure I'd probably wanna add would be like the agreement or something. And we have Dropbox and Google Drive integrations, which I absolutely love, right? You can do a hyperlink too, or you can just drag a file. So let's see if I have a file I can drag real quick here. I probably don't wanna drag my client's paycheck over there. So I just attached an image called monopoly.jpg. Let's make money. Let's see if it allows it. I'd be surprised if this works actually, because I wouldn't think they would want people randomly uploading documents to the sample file and loading down their servers with it. Larry wants to know what sort of reports are available. Larry, I'm so glad you asked that question. I think that's what we're going to have to look at next and last, but not least in the last 10 minutes of our hour. And I'm actually really excited to have Shafat on here because I know he's gonna really be able to dig deep with us. Um, look at added it. <laughs> That's awesome. A 14 megabyte file too. That's funny. Well, congratulations, BQ. You're now the proud new owner of a, a Monopoly image. And look, when you click on it, it opens up right in your browser. Isn't that cute? Which Monopoly piece did you like to be when you played as a kid? I always like to be the wheelbarrow, which they don't have here. 
I think if I did it today, I'd want to be the dog because that one kind of looks like Ralphie. Suchi, would you be the thimble? Um, hmm. You know, there's a new monopoly. It's called Here and Now, and there's all different. It's totally oh, there's all different, different pieces. That's yeah. why do they have to ruin stuff? They're <laughs> ruining my childhood when they do that. Don't they know this? Yes, it's over. It's all over. All right, so let's look at some reports now. My favorite thing to do report-wise is to actually just use the search. Because just like with BQE, BQE has like a million standard reports built in. And, uh, you know, so you can go through the list and they have it nicely grouped by category like accounting reports and activity expense items and aging and so on. Right? Or I could just say, you know what, I want a monthly profit and loss. So let's type profit and loss and enter to search. And that didn't work at all. Let's try this again. Profit, enter. Here we go. So now we have all the profit, all the reports with the word profit in them, right? Monthly profit and loss accrual basis. That's one of my favorite ones to run. And of course, I'll set my filters, my transaction date. I want this fiscal year to date. Right? I can add more filters by account, account name, and type. What are my other options? None. Let's click continue. So the quick answer, Larry, to your question is there's every kind of report you can imagine. And I'm going to take a wild guess here and say that just as was the case with Bill Quick, an ARCHI office, an engineer office, you can reach out to them if there's a report that's not already here and they can custom build it for you. There's a fee. Can you do cash versus accrual? Yes, you can. So I believe that was one of the parameters. Well, this one is by default accrual, but here's monthly profit and loss cash. So they, they haven't built out for you. You don't go in and edit them and change that setting like what we're used to with, you know, like with uh, QuickBooks. But, you know, but they have them already created on, on both bases. So, so in just theory, choose. you could use this to generate a financial statement for a tax return. Sure. How yep, about sales tax? Basis. How about sales tax? Well, so, let's, yeah. let's try that, Dennis. Let's type sales here. And see if we get sales or sales tax. So not based on a search, but let's see. And there, you know, there may not be a sales tax function here because again, this is designed for professional services where typically there aren't right, sales taxes, right. right? Although in some states, labor is taxed by the state. That's right? the trend. That's the trend. What's that, Sarah? Go to analysis. I think it was saying it, it might be in there. Oh, it had a little thing about. Can you do a, is there like a break even analysis report? <laughs> Here's actual and billing hours, cost analysis, earned value. Remember that the nature of this is, you know, analyzing detailed uh, data in terms of time and expenses, right? So hold on, I have. So I, I do have. Is for employees. I have Carrie from BQ joining us, so maybe Carrie can chime in and fill in some blanks for us here in the last few minutes that we have. <laughs> is there like an audit trail? Um, that's a good question. Who asked that? Me, that Dennis? Dennis. Yeah. That is a good question. I would think that would be in the accounting section. These are activity and expense items, so probably not there. Let's try audit and search. Nope. Nope, doesn't appear to be an audit trail. Is there a two-way sync back to QBO if you wanted to? Or? Yeah, no, there are integrations like I mentioned earlier. Um, in fact, where did my integrations go? Maybe they're in settings. I looked at this. I forgot where it is. I know I looked at this because I've done a video showing where it is. There's tax accounts. What? There's tax accounts in that screen you're in. 
No, that's not going to be the integration, though. There's a place where you go to actually link up. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I was referring you know, to QuickBooks this. Online. Yeah, oh, here it is. It's under Productivity Tools Integrations. Oh. I knew it was here. So over here is where I can add software. And right now, the choices of QuickBooks Online or MYOB. Right? And then you would choose Connect. And, of course, it's going to launch QBO's login and ask you to log in, which, of course, I'm not going to do. I mean, for example, if you had a product like, say, say um, Finograph that you were using with QBO and you wanted to be able to send information back to QBO so you could use, like, Finograph, that kind of thing. Yeah, so, again, you can connect QuickBooks Online. It'll sync to QBO, which will sync to Finograph. I had a question about the bank feeds. Mm -hmm. Can you use, like, logic or set up rules like you do in QBO or Xero? Uh, let's check that. So if we go to bank feeds, we may need to have an account linked up before we can uh, test that. So Dennis, you want to give me your logins for your bank account? And then we'll yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the password too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so we may need to have something linked up before we can determine that. And, or again, save that question for Shafat when he's here. How about uh, data security? Um, you know, I, I haven't actually researched that part specifically. I noticed that in the settings, there are security permissions. Um, the other thing I want to show you, by the way, because I'm sure some people are wondering, is on the pricing for this. Go away. Go away, Skype. This is why I hate Skype. I just... <laughs> anyway. Um, so there are a lot of security settings that you can set up within the product to make sure that people only have access to what you want them to have access to. Uh, you know, that's always been the case, and, and Core certainly still has that. Um, oh, look at this. I have, it's letting me know I have two timers going. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> can you edit the timers? Yeah. Like if you forget to turn it off? Notice the edit button, the edit option right oh, here. Okay, okay. Absolutely, and I can just stick the hours in and override it for sure. Um, wait, what was I just going to show you? What did you just ask me about? I was asking about uh, security. Data security, I thought, or maybe the security, right? So let's do. This is how I always test the security on things. Just Google BQE Core Security. Just Google product name security. And you should be able to find information on their website about the security of the product. Now, this is so new, it may not be that they have a specific page about the security of core. So it might just be BQE security that you want to search. Also, if you want to get a data dump that you would, say, send to Excel or um, Google Sheets, where you want to do, like, pivot tables, I assume you can do that. All those reports have the ability to export to Excel. Yeah. Okay. Or CSV, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically the same thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if I go back to reports, I don't see an, an immediate page on BQE security. It's another question we can ask Shafat when he's here next Friday. But if I go here, and let's say I just want to run, let's go profit. Profit and loss monthly, uh, accrual, it's a cruel world. And then of course here you can export PDF, Excel, or Word. So if you want okay. CSV, just export to Excel and then save that as a CSV. Right, right. Right. Now, my only complaint about this is that it comes in formatted like it is on the screen here, very pretty. But sometimes for our purposes, especially as accountants, it's not as functional as we'd like it to be. In an export, I really almost want like a flat file, right? So I can easily sort and subtotal and do things like pivot tables. So you will need to do some work on this to get it in shape, so to speak, for you know, if you want to do pivot tables with the information, that kind of thing, you'll need to flatten the file out, in other words, right? Because, again, it looks pretty from a presentational standpoint. This is gorgeous, um, although I'd really like my split screen to 
go down under the dates, but that's obviously very easily fixed. Um, but again, if you want to be able to really play with this data and sort and subtotal and do pivot tables, you'll need to clean it up a little bit. Now, is this like a superset of all their other products or does it integrate with their other products? No, it's, 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 as I mentioned in the beginning, it's, I believe, meant to replace all the other products eventually. Okay. They're not expecting everybody to migrate tomorrow, but I think the goal is eventually to have this, this is going to be the one core product. You see what I did there? The core product. Yeah. <laughs> core. So basically, they're going to compete with, uh, QB, with Intuit and Zero then eventually. I mean, on some levels, yeah, at least for the professional services industry. Right. Yeah. Or, or for that niche, because, again, with the accounting module, you really have everything you need to do everything from within core. You don't need any other product necessarily, unless, like you said, Dennis, you're looking to take advantage of other integrations that aren't directly available with core. So fine. Then you do core to BQO or to BQO core to QBO. There's too many acronyms in our world <laughs> core to QBO. And then that way QBO can be configured to integrate with whatever other apps you're wanting to use for integration. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, it really truly does have everything to run, you know, any professional services, particularly your architects and engineers and, and law firms, a lot of law firms use BQE, use their products. Um, it's great for law firms. Anybody that has very detailed billing needs, especially, you know, where you have to gather a lot of data in terms of time and expenses and then use that to bill. And I, again, I love the automatic billing features of Core um, that were also available in BillQuick because it just makes life a lot easier rather than having to go through and, you know, sort of harvest it on your own. You know, a lot of the heavy lifting is done for you. So that is pretty much it. That's the end of the hour, unless anybody else has any questions or anybody who's joining us from the audience wants to uh, chime in or ask something, use the chat or unmute and say hello and say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's it then. Everybody's clear. Everybody's good. Suchi, don't quit until you until the check clears, okay? <laughs> All right, I'm going to be checking my bank every five minutes. All right. All right, well, at least until sundown today, right? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's it. So like I said, I will have uh, Shafat with us. Let me double check the exact date. So I think it's not next Friday, but the Friday after. And yes, that is correct. So Friday the 18th, we're going to have Shafat here with us giving us a demo so he can answer all the questions that I couldn't because, like I said, this is all pretty new to me. Um, and don't forget to go to blog.bqe.com because that is where I roll about twice a week with new content. And a lot of that content coming out now is going to be on this product core. So we're going to be walking you through every little kind of nook and cranny of what this product does. And I've got lots of other content on there that you might find interesting and useful. And if you don't, so be it. But try it. See if you like it. If the shoe fits, wear it. If it doesn't, throw it out or give it to somebody who needs it. Okay? Cool. Signing off. We will see you all on the other side of the moon or sometime perhaps on Monday. Alrighty. Bye-bye then. <laughs> <laughs>